these are some tips that i would want all of you to remember in your exam preparation in this last hour i'll tell it topic wise let's quickly start with chapter 1 theoretical framework when you doing theoretical framework meaning and scope of accounting don't focus on the definition but remember limitations functions and measurement principles that limitations characteristic features and functions part please do read that without fail if there is a short note question on it it's a easy scoring topic and uh, accounting concepts and conventions remember to read concepts and conventions with an intention of including that in your answer for true or false when you get a true or false questions you might have to write the full concept in your true or false and the second point is sometimes they end up asking you difference between question difference between going concern and cost concept there is no difference between them they are very different just write definition of going concern or concept going concern whatever you know money measurement whatever you know or cost concept whatever you know write it in the t format or one below the other format so be ready to answer concepts in difference between questions and also include it in your true or false questions from capital and revenue they give a list of items four items five items and ask you to tell whether is it capital or revenue there are times where they have given eight of these and ask you for four marks and there are also times where they have given you four of these and ask you for two marks sometimes they'll give for half mark 50 paise for each item sometimes they'll give one mark for one item are you getting it and there is a chance that they might include this capital revenue portion in your true or false also so be ready to do that with regard to true or false we've done one small true or false marathon list of true or false which come in all the past rtps put together at one place yeah it's like in the quiz format like kbc so please do ask that will also be there in the same place if you guys want you can do that as addition to your existing preparation then with regard to contingent assets and contingent liabilities in definition they can ask what is contingent asset definition what is contingent liability definition and what do you mean by provision so be careful about that accounting policies can be taken much lightly other than the definition nothing else might come but if they do ask they can ask what are the problems with accounting policies no comparability no uniformity no standardization difficulty in picking what is the solution for accounting policies accounting standards and with regard to valuation principles know that what is historical costs what is retail what is current cost what is replacement price what is present value those four words remember them important in short notes questions then accounting standards not much needed and accounting process journal entry based questions can be asked in gst based journal entries otherwise straight gst gst straight journal entry questions if they ask it's lottery you should be very happy otherwise usually if it case it has to become complicated it will be gst based journal entries which again we'll discuss separately in detail whoever wants it can take that part also then ledgers it will be part of a bigger question trial balance don't ignore types of trial balance don't ignore that term. trial balance what we prepare under total method trial balance what we prepare under balance method total and balance method those kind of questions you don't forget they can sometimes ask a question where they have given an incorrect trial balance they want you to rectify the trial balance debtors amount is given on the credit side creditors amount is given on the debit side closing stock is given in the trial balance you need to redraft the trial balance by correcting it such question also you should be prepared and subsidiary books purchase book sales book with the discount and the gst portion very interesting questions easy to do and cash book also be ready to do if in case you get a question on cash book when you do questions on cash book remember one blind thumb rule what ica wants you to follow whenever a check is received treat it as cash receipt whenever the check is deposited that's when you'll call it as bank deposit when the check is received write in cash column next day when the check is deposited then you write in the bank column debit side or receipt side and then in the cash column credits i hope you got it don't total discount column Give the discount column untotaled. Receipt side is not discount received. Receipt side is discount alone. Payment side is not discount paid. It is discount received income. So credit side or payment credit side or payment side represents discount income. Debit side represents discount expense discount alone. That's what I want you to know. Petty cash book. Don't mug up the format. In the question, whatever expenses are given, please write only those expenses in your petty cash book. talking about rectification of errors usually people end up doing mistake because you don't identify the stage at which the error has happened so question will evidently tell is it after final accounts or is it before final accounts read that and then take care of it if it is after final accounts remember to replace nominal accounts with p and l adjustment account and after you do stage 3 rectification close your 
P&L adjustment account. Close your P&L adjustment account by transferring the balance to capital account. And also don't forget that if in case last year when the trial balance did not tally, they should have transferred the balance to suspense. If they have incorrectly transferred it to P&L, which is in, indirectly went to capital, then in the journal entries, wherever you use suspense, close the suspense account also by transfer to capital. Like how you do with regard to P&L adjustment. We have a question on this, uh, Mr. Roy question. Mr. Roy, illustration number 18 ICI study material. You can try that question with regard to the adjustment that I told you. Bank reconciliation statement. Remember, you will do adjusted cash book only if they ask. We need to classify the differences into what are timing, what are non-timing. Timing are only two. What are they? Checks issued but not cleared. Checks deposited but not cleared. Third one is error in passbook. Other than that, direct deposit not recorded, overcasted cash book, uh, bank charges not recorded in cash book, bank interest not recorded in passbook. All of these are non-timing differences, meaning errors. Errors have to be rectified in cash book. Cash book was already done. So we reopen the cash book. That is the reason we call it amended cash book or adjusted cash book. The order is, the order is, first you would have to prepare amended or adjusted cash book. Once you find the balance as per amended or adjusted cash book, that amended or adjusted cash book balance will go to BRS. And in BRS, whenever we have information, we should always start with balance as per cash book. Only after we finish with balance as per cash book, we end up with balance as per passbook. In a rare circumstance, when the balance as per cash book is not available, then we will start with balance as per passbook. In the September 25 examination, they want us to, us to do amended cash book, but they did not give cash book balance. What did we have to do in that case? Start with balance as per passbook, find balance as per cash book, use balance as per cash book, prepare amended cash book. You will get the amended cash book balance, use that and then prepare the BRS again, comprising of only timing differences to write and find balance as per passbook. The same video we have solved September 25 paper, you can actually watch that. Then, with regard to inventory, remember FIPO, LIPO, SAM, VAM based problems, what you have big ones are perpetual. What you do, in short, using formula is called periodical. Do the theory, difference between periodic and perpetual. And also do problems on periodic, what you say, stock reconciliation. When the stock taking happened before the year end, when the stock taking happened, after the year end. If it happened before, add inflow, deduct outflow. If it happened after, add outflow, deduct inflow. When you are dealing with outflow, by outflow I mean sales, by inflow I mean purchase. With regard to outflow sales, remember to adjust it at cost of goods sold, that is after deducting sales return and profit involved in the sale. With regard to goods sent on return on approval, you have only sent the goods, you have not sold the goods. If it is yours, you have sent it to somebody, it belongs to you, it should be included. If it is already there in your godown on the date of counting, no need to add. If it is not there in your godown on the date of counting, add it at cost. And consignment. If you have sent goods on consignment, though it is sent, it is still yours. If it is there in the third party's godown on the date of counting, add it to your stock. If it is already there in your godown, no problem. This is when you are sending. What if you have received consignment goods from somebody, it is not yours, it should not be included in your inventory. If you have wrongly included on the date of stock taking, deduct it to find the correct closing stock. Don't skip adjusted selling price method, please do it. It is simple uh, ratio proportion kind of question. For this much cost, this much is the selling price. For this much selling price, how much is the cost? Just cross multiplication and you will get the answer. Please do inventories adjusted selling price. Depreciation and amortization. Remember to give equal weightage and importance to all the methods of depreciation. Do some of your this method, depletion method, production units method, machinery rate method also. Remember, change in useful life, change in method of depreciation or change in scrap value should all be given prospective effect, not retrospective effect. Then amortization also similar to depreciation only, but you will write the name as amortization. Amortization is on intangible assets and depreciation is on tangible assets. Then talking about bills of exchange and promissory note. Remember to read the basic theory, difference between bills of exchange and promissory note. Journal entries in various circumstances. If you master the journal entries in various circumstances, you will be able to counter your mixed journals and accommodation also. And remember the types of bills and computation of due date, maturity date based questions. 
because it's been long time due they have not asked any questions when you have to compute maturity date or due date sometime in the exam that will come and the second reason is in journal based questions sometimes they expect you to write date column if you write the date incorrectly they won't give you so with that reason in mind remember to practice due date maturity date computation with holiday in mind then preparation of sole proprietorship non manufacturing manufacturing entities along with financial statements of npo and income tax records all are like minded chapters don't tell you will do two chapters out of these three or one chapter out of these three if anyone is doing selective learning it is really bad to do one out of these three or not do any of the three if you skipping skip all three if you doing do all three all the three are like minded chapters they go hand in hand you just have to get the feel of it remember don't try to use any shortcut this is not qa paper this is not economics paper qa faculty and economics faculty would have taught you lot of ways in which you can get the answer out of abcd quickly that is right for that paper in accounts paper which is descriptive working note forms part of the answer working note has marks and you have to dedicatedly devote some time for working note skipping working note and trying to finish the paper much early in time might cost you 3 months prepare ledger account whenever the need be whenever there is outstanding accrued prepaid don't do plus minus this is not mandatory in qa do you do debit credit no in account you should do debit credit in qa you do plus minus and trust me i am telling you with little experience that i have and little bit of student interaction that i had it will not take more time it's just a psychological factor that makes you feel that ledger takes more time plus minus takes lesser time it is not then with regard to incomplete records remember to practice both the types of problems statement of affairs method that is incomplete records maintained as incomplete only as well as conversion of single entry to double entry partnership part remember not to leave the smallest of the parts like interest on drawings interest on capital as well as a fixed capital system fluctuating capital system adjusting for partner with minimum guarantee all of these small small things also be little cautious don't skip them with regard to goodwill there are multiple methods i'd have to say simple average weighted average super profit capitalization annuity do all of them remember to not compute ratios for goodwill remember to adjust it using the table like how we did and you would have seen some questions that they solved in the class also would have done the same way apply that method and talking about death of a partner remember the payments have to be made and computed till the date of death if the death happens in the middle of the year profit will be computed on approximate basis and it will be taken away from pnl adjustment and credited to the deceased partner section 37 you don't forget the deceased partner payment has to be made or agreement has to be made if you don't make payment and if you don't even agree how much to pay and how to pay then the deceased partner's dependents are eligible for payments in proportion to the profit for the capital that is left out or interest at 6% whichever is more beneficial to the deceased partner's portion then and uh, dissolution don't skip piecemeal distribution it is very simple and maximum loss method and uh, uh rias let us surplus capital method are not two different methods it's the same problem seen from two different perspective if you know one the other is easy and garner versus murray questions in all the possible cases where one of them is insolvent more than one is insolvent and deficiency based accounting these do solve problems in all of that cases there's one small teeny tiny portion in the beginning which talks about premium to be paid to the uh, partner or premium to be not paid to the partner in the case of dissolution it's there in the book please do check that portion out and that's with regard to dissolution of partnership firm entire partnership as a whole don't skip jlp treat jlp treatments are crucial it can come as a part of a bigger problem so jlp in the case of admission jlp in the case of retirement jlp in the case of death as well as dissolution in short if i have to tell you in one minute if in case the partner dies you receive some assured if in case the partner retires you receive surrender value the money that is received will belong to firm firm will keep it and if it is profit it will be shared to all the partners in profit sharing ratio if jlp is treated as asset the surrender value recorded in the balance sheet will be compared with the money that we receive on the policy if we receive more profit share the profit to partners if we receive same no profit no loss what if there is no asset in balance sheet entire money received from the insurance company is profit share it to all the partners in profit sharing ratio if there is jlp reserve in the balance sheet treat it like just another reserve are you getting it then company accounts portion introduction be ready to cover some basic points of theory characteristic features of company because if in case they choose to ask short note question might come from there then with regard to issue forfeiture and reissue 
be ready practice with prorata based question calls in advance calls in arrears and reissue forfeiture capital reserve computation how much is profit how much is premium we discussed it at large in this marathon only please do watch that portion once again when you are watching marathon whatever the minute and second you find important you write it on your paper in the book so that if you have to watch again just the day before exam or two three days before exam you don't have to search for the time stamp you can see that specific time stamp what you find very interesting or irritating or difficult whatever then with regard to issue of debentures remember the treatment of premium on redemption and law what is a discount on issue together to be called as loss on issue of debentures such loss on issue of debentures will be debited by transferring to pnl account not in one year but over the period of debentures and it's not equal every year it is depending upon the outstanding debenture ratio at the beginning of the year that one part if you crack issue of debentures portion is done and accounting on bonus issue on right issue remember the bonus issue portions journal entry the utilization of reserves will be crr security premium capital reserve general reserve pl security premium and capital reserve can be used only if it is realized in cash entry will be reserves to bonus bonus to share capital and bonus issue can be made only if the share is fully paid up if the share is partly paid up you can convert it to fully paid up by bonus but when you are doing it you cannot use crr and security premium mandatory to disclose in the balance sheet when the shares are issued for non cash consideration redemption of preference shares can happen out of the existing cash in the company or can happen by fresh issue whenever it happens using the existing funds you have to create crr capital redemption reserve to the extent of decrease if they tell how many shares are to be issued good if they don't tell and we have to find remember sometimes if there is shortage in reserve divided by nominal value if the shortage is in cash divided by issue price we have discussed it in large in this very video you can watch it in detail there and share preference share can be redeemed only if it is fully paid up if a partly paid up share is given in the question and they ask you to redeem what do you do first you make the share call receive the money and then make the redemption after creating crr finally redemption of debentures remember drr is to be maintained at 10% DRRI is to be maintained at 15%. If it is not maintained, first take from general reserve, create DRR, then take from cash, create DRRI, then write debenture to debenture holder, premium if it is there, you debit it, then pay the debenture holder by writing debenture holder to cash. Finally, DRR, which is no longer required, will be reversed. Before you do redemption, you sell DRR. Order is 1, create, check DRR and DRRI, 1 and 2, 3, sell DRRI, 4, redeem debentures. Pay debenture holders and then transfer that premium to PNL if not. Lastly, sixth point is that DRR, whatever is maintained, which is no longer required, will be transferred back to general reserve. This is what I want you all to note in this preparation. And <coughs> like devotedly, a lot of you have been sitting here in the class for the last three, four days and then attending the lecture. All of you were watching it online. It wasn't easy. It should have been not easy sitting for such long hours and then watching. If you can force yourself to sit such for such long hours, listening to someone trying to help you, you should also be trying to continue this entire pattern and sit for such long hours and then study. This is a revision video. I would want to put a lot of subject in it. I do not want to put any or to say motivation in it. If you people have taken this course of chartered accountancy, you should be self-motivated. Yeah, but all that I would want to tell you is simplest trick to pass the examination is study period. That's it. Only trick that will make you help you pass is study. Yeah, more you do, more chances of passing. Less you do, less chance of passing. Zero you do, zero chances of passing. More you study, more chance of passing. So that's one simple tip from my side. Study hard, study long, do well, pass the examination for your sake, not for me or not for anybody else. I am proud of what I do. I don't want to be more proud because you did well or something. No. Remember that you're doing it for you and not for anybody else. Do it like how you're doing it for yourself and not for anybody else. And uh, that's it. See you all in C8 video.